Welcome to Between Two Wheels Podcast, where we talk about all things on and between two wheels. I'm your host, Johnny Roblox, and y'all know my co-hosts, Justin. I have learned the ways of assholism from Roblox and Ken Bird. And Uncle, yes, my toenails are painted. What of it, Ken? This episode is being brought to you by Get Lowered Cycles, your one-stop shop for all, all things Harley and Harley-related, and Nutsack, the last EDC bag you will ever want or need. Today, we are getting dirty with none other than the Shade Tree Surgeon himself. Yes, this is the Dirt Bike episode. Uh, before we begin, for everyone who donates $20 to Project Clean Slate, you will be entered into a drawing to receive a set of Advent Black Color Match to your Harley Stretch Saddlebags. We are limiting this to only 500 entries, and if you want your name entered more than once, donate an additional $20 for every entry you'd like. And remember, if you don't win, you can rest assured that the money is going to a great cause and it is a tax write-off. Head over to BetweenTwoWheels.com, the two is spelled out T-W-O, click the Project Clean Slate link and donate today. What's going on, guys? What's up? Fucking sore. Yeah? Yeah, yeah well, yeah. Well, anytime we, we want to talk dirty stuff, we know to bring you on. <laughs> <laughs> there it is and i'm hard no. <laughs> uh. no, I, know, I know you guys have to have to jump through some hoops uh because of our oh, conflicting of schedules yeah. to have me on here yeah. so i, I yeah, actually i really appreciate like that <laughs> and of course i i mean talking about dirt bikes is always fun i could go on ad infinitum about oh. and congratulations by the way, thank you. Thank yeah. you. I put it, on your new it put me your through the paces yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I should say. So uh, you'll find that dirt bikes are like dominoes too. Uh, everyone, you one person in a friend group buys a dirt bike, and since they're they're very the entry cost is yeah, we're three out of five already. Know, relatively low. <laughs> I, got, I got to buy a truck so first. Anymore. Yeah, <laughs> which is happening tomorrow. I, I did mine in reverse. Yeah, I got my yeah, truck on big, on Friday, so no <laughs> more Camaro. Yeah, no, I'm picking my truck up tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow, yeah, we're such impulse buyers over here. Well, and, see, I've I've been shopping for a while. Yeah. Well, the, the cool thing for anybody listening who wants to get into dirt bikes and goes like, "Well, I don't have a truck," is, uh, you know, if you have a off road only dirt bike, if it, if it weighs 250 pounds, you have a heavy dirt bike. So you couple that with a very cheap uh, one axle trailer from Home Depot or Lowe's that can be purchased for yeah. about seven or eight hundred dollars. Well, you plus they also have those little metric. trailer hitch uh, dirt bike haulers. Yeah, the yeah. dirt bike racks. I actually saw one of those yesterday. Yeah, there was quite a few out at uh, yeah. the place that we were riding at. Yeah. So. We actually considered that because my wife has a, a Ford Escape, but it's the EcoBoost V6, and it's got 3,900 pounds towing capacity, which, I mean, that that's plenty to haul two oh, yeah. dirt bikes in a trailer. In a trailer? Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you think about it, that's, that's two full baggers in a trailer. <laughs> I see people out there with everything, yeah. Volkswagen Jettas, with, with the, anything you can imagine. You can put a trailer, hit down and it'll pull a trailer. You're talking about a combined weight of, like, if basically having a full yeah. car, yeah. You, it's the yeah. same as having every seat yeah. in your car. So it's not a big deal. I, I was showing Justin uh, right before we started. I did find a dirt bike. Mm -hmm. uh, probably going to go take a look at it on Saturday. Cool. Yeah. So I get paid Friday so I can go buy it. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's a dirt bike. It's a uh, KX, Kawasaki. Kind of bike? Yeah. Four KX, stroke. Yeah. KX 250 or something like that. Yeah. KX 250F. Yeah, I think it's called. KX 250F. Yeah. Man, it's hard to go, it's yeah. hard to go wrong with a 250 cc four stroke dirt bike. Pretty much everybody yeah. makes a good one. Like of all the big four manufacturers. Um, KTM is weird because you get weird years and stuff like that because KTM yeah. changes so often compared to all the other manufacturers. Um, but, like, you know, you get a KX250. Yeah, like the only thing just, that, that you know, I had trouble somewhere. with yesterday was the, the kickstart only. I mean, 
not all, I mean, if I, I'd still need to, to tune the bike and get it, you know, riding a hundred percent, but that's, that was what killed me yesterday was not being, it, it doesn't start on the first kick. It's like seven or eight kicks in and mm. that just wore my ass oh, out. Hell yeah. That's, you start to, you start to learn the bike too for kickstarting it and you know yeah. getting it tuned right will help but it's also just learning how to kick no it. no no um and it, i know that sounds so dumb but really like you yeah know, that's what i was telling brad yesterday on the way back is that i had an xr100 <laughs> that was kickstarter only and i would have bet a full paycheck that i could kickstart it on the very first kick every single time yeah Right, and someone else yeah, that was, get on that bike but, and have um, to kick it ten times. That was the thing is like I was having a hard time kick. learning how to kick it. Like I couldn't find any sort of patterns with the the feedback and how it was starting. But we only rode for I think three hours. So mm -hmm. the the big fix to that, by the way, if uh, for a kickstart only bike and it, and by all means, oh yeah, I, mean, I, I was I was telling Brad about that so on the way back as well. I was, I was like, after today, a recluse might actually be on my list of things to get and much much for me much less than like not having to use the clutch yeah it's, the recluse yeah. is just like it, when you drop okay, the bike, I'm, I'm getting right. I'm getting weird looks no, from, no, from no, these I, guys I know I've heard about recluse because they okay. make reverses for Harleys really yeah huh I'm pre well, I mean I doubt it's a different company you know yeah but yeah they make reverse kits to put yeah. on your Harleys it's a centrifugal clutch yeah, oh, they, that too. Oh, okay. Makes, yeah. They, they make an but auto the kit's like what, like six hundred, eight hundred dollars, something like that. No. The same thing. They're not cheap, yeah. but you know they they work. They work. So th things that genuinely yeah, true. work no, and that's really facts. kick ass. <laughs> yeah, yeah really you, you definitely get what you pay for. <laughs> yeah. So talking about dirt bikes and all this other stuff. So you said a two fifty. What CC should we be looking? for to do like trail and ranch riding so you're gonna get from from me i'm incredibly biased um and i don't apologize for that i'm a i'm a two-stroke fanatic and for a many different yeah. reasons that i can go mm. on so if i was you you're a full-grown man <laughs> physically um, i would i mean and this is just me do do what you want go buy the that that will serve you just fine but since you're a full-grown man yeah. i would say go out and find a ktm 300 um that's that would be my advice 100 percent a ktm 300 cc two-stroke um from i think in my opinion the best years it's the year i own they made them from i think like 2008 to 2016 it's one of the longest runs that ktm ever had and for good reason because it was one of the best designs they ever had besides um, a bad starter, which my starter is just trash. But you just kick it; it's not hard to kick. I don't. If you don't care that much about having a starter, then who cares? But uh, that's what I would recommend for somebody who's a full-grown man with a good head on their shoulders, and you're like not going to hurt yourself because they're easy to rebuild, they're easy to work on, um, they're yeah, we got, we stone got a cold reliable. Close by. We got a, just, ah, they're just a great. 2007 bike. KTM 300 XCW for 2800. Yeah, but with KTM it's a higher cost of entry typically a little bit yeah um the one i'm looking at 1800 before i negotiate with the guy yeah all these all these ktms are yeah. pretty high ktms and husqvarna's are going to be a little bit higher than the japanese bikes yeah almost always so a ktm 300 two stroke now <clears throat> why do you prefer two stroke over four stroke Uh, specifically a 300 two stroke. See a, a 250 two stroke from a Japanese brand. Um, the Yamaha 250s are great, um, and you can do a lot of stuff with those. There's a lot of aftermarket for them. You can make them great trail bikes, but most of the um, Japanese 250s are meant to be motocross bikes. The KTM 300 specifically hmm. is a better four stroke than a four stroke. Um, you can everyone. People, old school motocross guys who watch my videos and go, like, why are you lugging that thing around? You don't know how to ride a two-stroke. You need to make that thing sing and get it up in the power band and get it on the pipe. And they just, I, I, I don't know if they've never ridden a KTM 300, but this bike has so much torque. 
Like I literally, I can leave it in third gear in the woods and never take it out. I can start Damn. it in third gear and I can leave it in. Th- it's, it, you, you know what I mean? It's it's insane. It has so much torque. You can lug it at the lowest RPMs you can imagine, and it won't stall. It's just a, it's just the best woods bike I can imagine. But you know, to take everything. You're I You're more of an expert than me. I'm not a fucking expert, dude. Works, works really yeah. well for me because it's an incredibly forgiving motorcycle. It gives mistakes, you know. Whereas a two, those two fifties, like Justin's two fifty, I haven't seen your video yet, um, but I if I will <laughs> I will make a couple guesses <laughs> of what happened right now. I imagine there was a lot of stalling, um, a lot of what they call flame outs, like when you're trying to when you're trying yep. to go somewhere and the bike just like f- like stalls out on you. Um, because it's a motocross bike, it's probably got a very light flywheel. Uh, it doesn't have enough rotating mass to lug around in in a in a look in a you know low gear where you're not gonna uh, be like on the power band so to speak. It's made to rev. They rev super high. They don't make power to like high RPMs. So, um, that's the KTM's exactly the opposite. It makes all yeah. its power. No, you, you nailed it. I mean, it was. Also I I had Brad leading for a good portion of the day, and then eventually I just had to take over because the speed that he got a, a CRF two thirty F. It's kind of the, the trail version, so his bike was a lot more comfortable at low speeds. But I was like, I have to pass you because trying to keep behind him i'd have to be in first gear and constantly feathering the clutch just for it to go that slow and it not stall so it, i had to get up into like second second gear about halfway through the rpms to go at like a putting pace like just to kind of putt <laughs> through it and i was just leaving him in the dust just by you know still going yeah. that slow <laughs> yeah absolutely and you, can, you can fix that you can fix that so when <laughs> oh absolutely like, no oh, I, I said that on the way back I was like well serious. I'm gonna have to do yeah, a lot more work to this bike than I thought I was because I mean it yeah and, and I didn't trail, honestly I didn't think it was going to be to that bike. different but I guess the the bikes have just changed so much in my in my time away and I guess my riding style has changed a lot too but it was it felt like trying to to drive a Ferrari through like cramped New York streets like that's how I felt it's like all this power. <laughs> And it's just, I'm not in the right environment to put it down. So, no, you're absolutely right. It's going to turn into quite the project. But with saying that, that kind of stays in line with everything I do on my channel. Like, I'm taking these yeah. big-ass heavy Harleys and trying to turn them into decently handling machines, making them do what they're not supposed to do. Like, I took a Geezer Glide and tried to make it cool. Yeah. <laughs> I took a, a you know, 700-pound Harley and tried to make it handle. Like, that's, that's kind of my thing. So, I'm, I'm excited for that. So for our listeners who do not know the difference between a two stroke and a four stroke, can you elaborate on what that difference is? Um, I mean, well, I assume everybody here is enough of a gearhead to know what a four stroke engine does. It's a, wait, are we, you know, wait, are we still talking about, yeah. uh, I knew that was where you have four, a four, a four, yeah. Uh, so I mean, you uh, and a and a two stroke is is just that it's um it's the the it works on two strokes. So it for every time uh, for every com- uh, power stroke for every. So you're combining two of the, the on a processes within a four strokes and doing it so. in half the time, basically. Hmm. Hmm. So yeah, it's just a, it's an older design. I mean, it's. It's a really a, a kind of antiquated, but a lot of and these companies the are just made up work in a really good You have to way. do usually some type. Well, you always have to do some type of oil gas mix uh, on a two stroke. Oh yeah, I guess that would be the other one. Yeah, so there's no valves. So that's the first thing. There's no camshaft. There's no valves. Um, and then, yeah, the oil and the gas is mixed because the it, you've got everything happens once. I'm not an expert on exactly how two strokes work. If I try to go into it, I'm just going to embarrass myself. And there's going to be a bunch of people who are watching this who go, "That guy doesn't know what he's talking about." I know the basics, but I can't really speak on any right, kind so, of so, expert so that level makes... on uh, on two strokes. So I that they're easy to rebuild, and they're they're. <laughs> 
it's like I've I've rebuilt a two stroke, you know. I put a new piston in one before, but it's a uh, it can that takes about an act not even an afternoon at, after doing it once. Yeah, like, I I've, I've heard that working on a two stroke race in like an just hour and a half. gobs easier. Yeah, than a four stroke. Oh, you have. A lot less, more parts. Less, less parts. Less yeah. moving parts that could will will fail on you. Yeah. yeah. It makes sense. Um <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, a piston yeah. on a two stroke is a wear item. I mean it's a it's it is. It's a wear item. It's like brake pads. You know, you replace it. I mean I I go to replace mine like a little over every hundred hours, which you could probably get more out of it, but Yeah. It's when you're talking about piston yeah. costs, like so. What are some things that we should look for when we're deal. purchasing a used dirt bike? Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm saying this after the fact. One without race numbers on it. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, Justin. <laughs> it's uh, um, it's I. I it's the same with any used bike. Find a model that is very popular. Um, that way there's a lot of aftermarket support and there's a lot of forum support and there's a lot of easy parts out there to buy for it. There, the issues are known. Um, so again, like I said, KTM 300, mm -hmm. the YZ250, like anything that they made a lot of, that's, that's usually what, what I usually go for. And especially with a dirt bike where it's like, a dirt bike isn't trying to, you're not trying to be different. It's not like on a motorcycle where you're like, I got to have something different from everybody else. Like, no, you want something the same. So someone may have an extra part. When you part. have an issue and you're out there, like, <laughs> you're yeah. like, oh, well, this guy's got the same so, thing as me. So he's going to know what's you kind up. of touched on it earlier, but from the big four Japanese manufacturers now, for again, for our listeners who don't know what that is, the big four is Honda, Suzuki, Kawasaki, and Yamaha. Um, is there a big difference in their offerings or are they all pretty much the same? <laughs> You're asking the wrong guy, man. <laughs> You're asking the wrong guy. Um, hmm. I, I really, I really can't even begin to comment on that. I mean, I mean so pick, I, I, for I've me, been, I'd be like, just pick whatever you know, color. Trying you're to in. do a lot of research on, on on brands, just so I don't pick you know a particular year that's crappy or anything like that. Nothing and nothing stands out. No, nothing I've ran across says do not buy a. 2008 Yamaha or anything like that then they're all I mean it's kind of like they're all six in one hand half a dozen in the other yeah. yeah I mean one bike will have you know this great feature and these won't have that one and vice versa so I mean that's just based on my like yeah. month or so of of research it's I know there are bad years so again I'm not going to comment on this because there's someone who's watching this is going to go like, well, didn't you know that the 2006 KX250s would hand grenade if you blah, 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 did this? I'm like, okay, no, I didn't. Because I don't know. So I'm not going to say, I'm not going to comment on it too hard. But we'll say it's like this. It's like, I, you look for model year changes. I mean, the Japanese manufacturers, they update their um, race bikes like they update their leader bikes. So they're <laughs> super competitive, way more competitive than um, they are in their and so they're they're constantly at each other's throats. And uh, if I if I think I, I know Kawasaki always has a reputation of being out there a little more than the other ones. I believe like they are always like pushing the boundaries yeah. for their yeah. new model offerings, which can be a bad thing. But you're talking about 450s where you just these guys are just trying to be on the bleeding edge yeah. of of technology to win races. You know what I mean? You're not talking about reliable beat them up on the trail bikes you're talking about these are motocross bikes and that's why i mean i i'm not a motocross guy if you're a motocross guy and you're like i need every possible fraction of a horsepower out of this little engine then that's something different like um what i would again look for is is instead of motocross bikes are so plentiful but i would look more for trail bikes like you not and not trail bikes like a CRF 230, but trail bikes with real suspension stuff like a WR 250, um, yeah. stuff that they made it the same for a lot of years. So like you take the Yamaha WR 250, they made that, that was the same bike yeah. for such well. a long time. And you're just yeah. there's huge aftermarket form and not the street version, the off road version. 
the WR250F um, specifically. The WR250R is a great bike, but it's a pig off-road. Um, the WR250F, that was yep. the same bike forever and ever well, see, that, and That's ever good to know, ever. though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? You haven't started your research yet. You know, that, that's some good information to have. Yeah, and you also need to know, like, what you plan on doing with it. Kind of to his yeah. point, like, if you want to do trail riding, look for something more trail-oriented. If you want to, you know, go out there to the track and send it, then look for race bikes. If you want to, you know, take it down the grocery store and sometimes do some trails in the afternoons, maybe a dual sport. <clears throat> I mean, there's there's, t- there's options for everything. Yeah. yeah. I'm definitely not going to send it, really. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, and again, I would... Uh, WR250. I, so if you're looking and you find a WR250 and a YZ250, I'd much rather. Yeah. I would, okay. me personally, I would much rather buy the WR250. Oh, of course. Personally. You know, a bunch of people are going to disagree. No, the WRs with, are solid. It's just more reliable. So it's just, let's know. move into trail riding. So what can we expect, you know, for like Ken and I, not really off-road guys, uh, Justin raced for a number of years. What can we expect when going trail riding um it's just oh, it's hell. that it's going to be like learning how to ride a motorcycle all <laughs> yeah brad road. learned that real quick Nothing his first 30 trans- seconds on the bike he grabbed a fistful of front brake and paid the price <laughs> now here's now here's a funny one so this is something this was a a myth that was and my saying that you were perpetuating this this just reminds me of it this was a myth that was sold to me so much and i thought about it all the time when i first started writing people were like oh you can't you can't touch the front brake you can't touch the front brake and i thought i was like oh man i'm in the sand like if i just touch this front brake <laughs> i'm just gonna just sprawl ass over tea kettle and die if i even like think about it and you're going like well that's kind of ridiculous why do they even put a front brake on it so what you have to learn this is something that i have learned what you have to learn is yep you can use the brakes till they break loose, just like you are on the street on a non-ABS motorcycle. So if you think about a non-ABS motorcycle, how hard can you pull on the brakes? As hard as you want until they break loose. And it's the same on the dirt. So can you use the front brake? Sure, until it breaks loose. And so you need to find out where that is. And once you ride your bike for a little bit in different conditions you find out exactly how hard you can grab your front yeah. brake and, and, and to that point i think another thing that needs to be is. kind of added on to that is that that point is going to change depending on the terrain so oh, yeah. how you uh, like using his example if you're going straight line in the sand you're going to yeah. get to use it differently than if you were on like a 10 percent downward grade mm-hmm. on rocks yeah like there's gonna your, your traction is going to change drastically depending on yeah and where you're sitting on the bike changes it and what tires you have change it and how much if you're on the throttle or not changes it like there's a million different variables but yep. that's what makes riding dirt bikes fun is it's really hard um it's not i we i think we touched on this a little bit in the last in the last podcast is that it's i love i love riding motorcycles i love being on two wheels um obviously we all do um but when you talk about riding dirt bikes, is there's just you can get it's an yep. infinitely it's an infinite scale of getting better. You always go out there and you work on something. And you could say the same thing about street bikes. You'd be like, I worked on this or I worked on this. But really it's like you get up to a certain point, you're like, I'm good at riding, um, you know, and I'm vigilant and unless you're trying to be Mr. Fucking, you know, take a corner at a million miles an hour. You're just like you reach a certain plateau. No, yeah. You're just like, this is, so this is where I stay. Um, you know what I mean? That is not dirt bikes. Dirt bikes, you are constantly like, ooh, let me work on this, let me work on that. And even people who are great at it are like that. They're like, I got this little thing. I want to work on this. I want to work on this little corner. You're always something always that fiddling. I with notice something. watching really YouTube rewarding. videos of trail riders, watching your videos, things like that. And it's, it's going to be the hardest thing for me is putting my foot down in a turn <laughs> because... No, you'll get used to it real quick. <laughs> well, sorry. See, so, like, I was to your... I feel like this goes with what you're thinking of right now. Is I equate dirt bike riding to me growing up riding my bicycles. Yeah. 
I rarely used my front brake. I used my rear brake all the time. You know, you, you stand up, you move, you wiggle. Mm-hmm. Of course, there's, you know, a giant engine underneath you propelling you along. Yeah. But th- that, that's kind of the way I, in my head, feel like it's going to work. Mm-hmm. That's the, that's the other thing. There is nothing, talking talking about riding a bike, there is nothing that will make you feel incredibly <laughs> old Accurate. and also incredibly <laughs> young at the same time. Like, there, you just go get head. out yep. you're and like, then the I next day, like you, in my you need a shitload of ibuprofen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm up to four already today. Old. Motrin and water, baby. <laughs> no, honestly, our, our biggest mistake yesterday was, I mean... As far as putting your, as far as putting your foot down, it's, um, you just don't... Again, it, <clears throat> like trying to figure out all these techniques is um, sometimes a fool's errand because you're going like, oh, I'm going to put my foot down this. I'm going to do this turn like this. Like the most important thing to do first is just to get out there and ride the bike um, because you don't, you're not going to worry about that. Like when you talk about putting your foot down, mm-hmm. you do that for so many different reasons. So it's not like, oh, you have to have your foot out in a turn. You don't. You can rip a huge turn hmm. and not put your foot out. Plenty of riders don't. Uh, in fact, on, in, in enduro racing, a lot of people try to discourage that practice because it. Um, you're talking about yeah. a mar- marathon racing. Every movement counts. So if you're if you're putting your leg out for every turn, even when you don't need to, just because it's force a habit. That is just that extra movement mm-hmm. that's taking away from your overall store of energy. You know what I mean? So you don't always have to do it. So you can do it. Some people do it to weight the front wheel so the front wheel can bite better. Um, the main reason to do it is it's basically like a, it's a, they call it a third wheel. So if you start to lose it, you can tap the ground with your foot and save it. Um, there's just, there's like so many different reasons people do it. And then there's just dabbing. Like if you're starting to lose your balance, you can just dab with your foot to get your balance back. Like there's a, there's a million different, there isn't one reason why people put their foot out in a turn or any other reason, but don't think that you have to get out there and think that if you don't put your foot out in a turn, you're going to be screwed. That's not the case. As we continue down our journey of, you know, going from the street to the dirt, what are some tips that you can give us for, trail riding workout (laughs) um plenty of water and don't get frustrated i mean that's that's the biggest one is like as going from the street to Mm. the dirt is the frustration level can sometimes be super intense and you got to just remember you're out there to have a good time you know um and just laugh when you fall as you see fall down you just got to laugh you know, because it's, I've seen a lot of people just get very, very frustrated because it, it's difficult. You're not going to, you're not, you think you're going to be, I thought I was like, I'm going to be okay at this. And I wasn't, I was so, it was so hard. It was, it was so incredibly difficult to, to ride around. And I don't know what y'all's terrain over there. Like we're like Mm -hmm. everywhere is like really deep sugar sand over here, which can frustrate even some Riders who've been riding for a long time, um, you just got to learn. Man, to do so it. we went out to, to Hidden so, Falls what, what yesterday, it like out there, and that was the thing that shocked train. me the most. Is I used to ride um, kind of southeast of San Antonio, and the terrain is totally different. I'm talking night and day. So uh, the place I used to ride at was uh, a lot of red sand, a lot of deep red sand, uh, and it also runs along the banks of the San Antonio River. So a lot of rich soil, a lot of moist soil really fun to ride in but hidden falls man it was 99 percent rock so um i know the i can't remember what race it was i believe it was the race that you were doing that was attached to the motocross track and it had that one really like steep downhill oh uh-huh. yeah it was it was similar to that but Get i mean back. Imagine that downhill portion, but about three times as long, and then an opposing, just like a mirror image on the other side. So you were going down probably about, I don't know, 100 yards, 200 yards, and then up that same elevation, about 200 yards. It was pretty difficult. Yeah, the hard rock no. can be really weird because it, you're like, oh, it's rock, I'd have traction, but 
in my experience, it, what exactly. happens a lot is you get this layer of dust and soot yep, on top it, it of definitely it. was. I mean, it's like, it was almost to that point oh, where like right you having your, your back wheel locked up was the only way down it. You were just kind of just controlling the slide, almost like a, like a skier. You'd go to the right, bring it back, go to the left, <laughs> bring it back, go to the right. But uh, you, you said something uh, that I, I really wanted to touch on, and it's the... Uh, your overall bank of energy, mm-hmm. um, which is super important in enduro racing, but it's also really important in just regular trail riding. And that's really where we made our mistake yesterday is we went way too hard right off the bat. And we did a couple, you know, just up and downs, hill climbs, down, uh, you know, declines and everything like that. And then we got to one, which was a, a pretty, I mean, it was a decent uh, ascend, but right at the top, it had about like a I don't know, maybe a foot or two, just solid rock face. Oh, so you had to, you know, get your front wheel up on it and get up. And I didn't expect Brad to go for it. Cause there was a trail to go around it, but he just like, he looked at me and I was like, do you want to do it? And he just took off. I'm like, all right, I guess we're doing this. <laughs> he got to the top and of course he, he wasn't able to get up, get over it. So he had to get off the bike and, and push it over. And eventually I had to take over and get it up for him. But I mean, that took us, 10 minutes of just full on physical exertion and it just wiped us out for the day. So it was any hard obstacle we faced after that, we were just completely exhausted and gassed. So it's just something to be mindful of. It's, it's okay to turn around and, you know, make your day last longer. Yeah. It's, it's you got to understand like if once you, because you, you're out riding, you get into a rhythm. You're like, yep. okay, I'm expending my energy at a at a comfortable level. Yep. And yeah. then something as simple as having to pick your bike up. Yeah. <laughs> just having to pick it up. You're just like, what happened? Oh. <laughs> like, what happened? It's because yep. you're just you're like, I, just I, I, we had a, a little section that <laughs> literally, like, we were afraid we were going to have to, like, call for, like, a medevac. That's how bad it got. So we, we did that, that one little rock section. And we kind of sat there and caught our breath. We're like, okay, we're good. We're good. And we started riding around. We ended up getting lost. We couldn't find out where we were. And then we're like, all right, let's try to make our way back to camp, which means having to go up and down all those hills that we just came down. Mm. And the very first one, Brad tries to sit down the whole way up and just kind of <laughs> kind of veers off the trail and then lays it over and falls like halfway down the hill. Oh, and I was like, oh, you know, ha, 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 funny. So I, as he's picking his bike up, I just roar up the hill. And it kind of does like a little double. So I, you know, go up the hill and I can't see him and he's not coming. He's not coming. He's not coming. I don't hear his bike. I'm like, ah, oh, shit, maybe he needs help. So I ride down, back down the hill and he's, the bike's still laid over, just pouring fuel everywhere. I'm like, oh, fuck. Oh, shit. <laughs> so we go to help him up and it, we're basically fighting against the hill to get oh, the bike yeah. tipped up. Oh. And after that, he was just physically exhausted and he had to sit there and he was getting lightheaded and everything mind you this was all in 100 103 degree heat index (laughs) so just completely wiped out and finally we get his bike up you know clear out the the flooding that was going on and he gets up and goes up the hill and i get my bike and of course i have to pick it up because i don't have a fucking kickstand there's no trees out there so i just have it laid against a fucking rock so i get my bike up and i kick it and I kick it, and I kick it, and I kick it, and I kick it, and you're I kick not, it. You're not selling this very well to me, man. Bro, I'm telling you, man. We, we made a mistake with that rock. But I just, I kicked it like probably 15, 20 times, and it won't go. I'm like, fuck. And then I start getting lightheaded. I start feeling like I'm going to throw up. I'm like, motherfucker. So I had to take my helmet off, and I just sit there and try to catch my breath. And eventually, I'm like, just push me down this hill. <laughs> I'm just going to bump start it. So he pushes me down the hill. I'm in second gear. I dump it. doesn't go. I'm like, fuck. I'm still like halfway down the hill. I kick it into first, and it fires up. I'm like, oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, there was a moment there where we definitely passed our energy exertion point. So <clears throat> when when talking about all of this, <laughs> what are some tips that we can give our listeners who are th- getting into dirt biking or are thinking about it? What are some things that – they can do let's say before going out to the trail and practicing on their bikes what are something you know obviously we talk about you know you need to have a lot of energy so probably carb up which for you justin being on keto is not really an option nope but uh something like that shaytree what do you do when you're preparing to go out for trail rides Usually, that's carbs. That's carbs. Drinking heavily. Um, 
in, <laughs> in smoky bars. Um, <laughs> just fucking send know, it. Just fucking do it. Um, be pussy. I, I mean, as far as like getting ready, it's like we're not go- you're not going out there to to like set the world on fire. You're just going to ride trails. So eventually, there. I mean, in my opinion, you can work out. Like, so there, here's the difference. You look at somebody like B Rad. Um, he is like on the on the bleeding edge of being good at riding his bike. He's just like so good, and he keeps his body in incredible physical condition, mm-hmm. and he can do amazing things on a dirt bike, right? Um. And, you know, I have a great time riding a dirt bike as well, but I'm not, I'm not B-Rad by any means. That doesn't mean I'm not having a good time. I'm having a great time. But I'm just, I don't know. I'm not trying to be the best. I'm just trying to be my, the, like, I'm just trying to have fun and push myself. Now, you don't have to yeah, push, push yourself, yourself to be to the be best. Better better than you are yourself. the day before. There's a difference. Yeah. Exactly. And it's like, so what, what is the best? How long is a piece of string? You know, I'm just like, I'm better every time I ride. And so to do that, there's just no replacement for seat time. Just the more, you, how do you, yeah. how do you get better at riding a dirt bike? Ride a dirt bike. How do you get more energy to ride dirt bike? What, like, what do you do to build energy to ride a dirt bike? You know how you get better at picking <laughs> up a dirt terrible. bike? Those muscles get big quick. Times and pick it up again. <laughs> Like, yeah. that's how you get All better right, at so it. so let's... <laughs> and I'm just sorry. I know I'm just, like, cutting through the Gordian knot here. But, I mean, I just... I think it's really important that... From my experiences, I overthought things so much. I was like trying to do all these things and watching all these YouTube videos, and I had uh, so much stuff in my head, and I would have been better served. Yeah, it's kind of like us when we were on our bachelor out. weekend... Uh, for Justin's bachelor party. Oh my party. God. <laughs> We're watching oh, Jesus YouTube Christ. videos of how to snowboard and how to ski. And one of the guys with us, I mean, he was the ultimate quitter. Goddamn LA. <laughs> uh, we, <laughs> uh, Ken and I didn't go to actually ski or snowboard. We were spectating and hanging out. And this guy got a snowboard he got all the gear everything was super hyped and i don't think he actually took the snowboard off the little not it wasn't even a bunny hill it was the next step lower than that (laughs) it was the the bottom of the bunny hill yeah yeah (laughs) and so you know we go back to the airbnb we're watching youtube videos okay this is how you do this This basic 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 snowboarding yeah had like a three-year-old little girl doing all this really cool shit and he ended up changing out to get skis uh, because he just couldn't get the hang of it. So I kind of translate that. Don't take what you're watching on YouTube as gospel because you're not there. When you're not them. Yeah. I mean, some people just have better skills naturally yeah. than, it, than other people do. It's kind of like in grade school when I'm playing football. There's that guy that's born with natural athletic ability. Yep. And then there's me. Who no? I can I can wrestle. I can't play football for shit. So that's. <laughs> oh man, I identify with that. Dude, I I never. People are like, oh, I just I don't know. It just makes sense. I was naturally good at it. I've never been naturally good at anything in my life, ever. I've had to fucking man, fight. I don't know. See, for me, it's for guns. Anything I'm even <laughs> Just, just guns. I can pick up a gun and shoot it, and and hunting. Just, I'm good at it. I'm great at failing at things. See, That's, you're good at something. Oh, see, but but. You- yeah, well, that's that's always been like, what are, what are you good at? Uh, perseverance, but only only because I have to. Because if I did not persevere, if I wasn't stubborn, well, yeah, and, and that, well, stuff, and that's how you learn. Never you know, you don't learn okay from your successes. You're not learning a lesson. You figured, oh, I can do this, you know, and it worked. And you keep doing it, but you're not really learning anything. You know, it's, it's you know, and the, the perfect quote for anyone is, you know, Michael Jordan. He's like, you know, get out there and throw that ball, you know, and you're going to miss a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, you're, you're going to learn from your mistakes. What not to do. What not to do. So. It's actually an important lesson that um, dirt bikes taught me. 
And um, this, I t I've talked about this in a couple of races, which is okay if you've not seen them. Like, they're at, at two hour long fucking races, and there's a lot of them. So, a, a lot of times when you're rate, I'll have just these thoughts about why I do things. And so, <clears throat> with dirt bikes and racing, now when I said I've never been naturally good at anything, <laughs> what I have been good at is learning just enough to look good at stuff. Right. No, but you like, you know, like learning the first few notes to a song or like, you know what I mean? Like you just like, I know enough or you like, I know enough about this oh, subject yeah, I'm a, I'm a professional to bullshitter. appear to be an expert and nobody <laughs> pushes it. You, you know? And so like, I've been that way about a lot of things in my life. And I've just, and almost like for a long time, almost sold myself. I was like, oh man, I know about so much stuff. Like I'm so smart. But really, like you know, you're not. You're you're not an expert. You just you know. Yes. You know the cliff notes. To impress yes. somebody who knows <laughs> nothing. Uh, and so what I found exactly, and that was that was with a lot of things in my life. And so dirt bikes was very humbling for me because you cannot fake it. Um, if you're going to be honest I'm and show, and I'm, that's always been my thing on YouTube. I'm very honest. I show the thing. So you can't nope. fake dirt bikes you cannot fake being good at it you can't there's no it just everything is stripped away you you will suck and you will look like you suck you will look stupid um and there's no way around that and the only way to get better at it is to work really hard at it and so i was really like when i first started doing it i was really flummoxed i was like wow i can't believe how bad i suck at this and am continuing to suck at this like i'm not getting any better and so it was a really huge lesson. I'm like, man, this is really going to, if I want to be any kind of proficient yeah, at this, this is going to take real dedication. Hey. And so it was, it was a great lesson and also like made me just go like, no, this and is that's, not I mean, and that's this, exactly you know, like gonna, you said, that's I'm where that perseverance comes this, in. You know, you, know, you, you don't want to go spend $2,000 on a dirt bike and go a couple times and hate it and, and absolutely hate it and not want to get better. I mean, I think, I think a big part of, of doing something new and outside your comfort zone is really giving it, you know, a chance, a real chance. Yeah. So something I, mean, that, I, I know I'm going to fucking be terrible on a fucking dirt bike. I just fucking know it. Do it, do it a yeah. hundred times. So one of the That's things the that thing. I think do it 100 times. Well, one of the things I like about how we're doing this is we're building our own support structure to go out and do this. So, you know, potentially there'll be five dirt bikes for the five of us who ride together a lot anyways. And Justin having the most experience on the dirt bike, we can kind of watch to see what he does and adapt that to our own style. And being able to watch all of us fail together it will help all of us learn <laughs> yeah no. it'll also make for great video let me tell you that let me just give you a piece of advice i'm, I'm go trying out every but... weekend <laughs> go out every weekend that's that and, and okay. oh well, yeah i mean i'm gonna weekend, weekend, you know, drop a couple grand on a motorcycle you know that I, mean? I can't ride on the street i'm definitely gonna want to get <laughs> what yeah. i get and what so, i pay out of it because it's, well it, when you're a grown-up <laughs> and you have a job you know it's like you know, like you go like oh well we can go we go out right on Sunday like oh well something came up this Sunday we'll go out next Sunday well guess what something yeah. came up that Sunday and then like that's your only day to go ride dirt bike so you go like all of a sudden three things came up three weekends in a row yeah and that, that already bothers me in my head yeah <laughs> you know what I mean so it's it, but I mean it's just you you that's what that is so it's so easy for that to happen and let me tell you so You've got all these friends who are going to buy dirt bikes because of you. This is something I learned, too. I convinced so many of my friends to buy dirt bikes. You can see it in my yeah. videos. And you know how many of them still ride them? Almost none. There's a couple that do. Almost none. I felt, I went through a huge guilty phase. I was like, I can't believe I talked to so many of my friends into making large yeah, that's, purchases that they That's why I'm not even looking at relatively new bikes because I, I don't want to spend five or six thousand dollars on something that I may not like. And you know, we were talking about this in our ADV episode. Yep. 
let's get the dirt bikes because it's a lot less expensive oh, yeah. cost of entry. Learn the basics of off-road riding. And then if we really enjoy it, then we can upgrade to something that we can just ride to the trail and then go get on the trail with an ADV. Yeah. No, 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 no. Are you thinking about it wrong? I'm sorry. I, don't, I hate to just completely disagree with you, but it's just really different. Like an ADV bike, you can ride it off right. road and you can learn how to ride it, but you're never going to like be ripping it off. Is it possible? Sure. It's possible for some yeah, people. Been there, done that. Possible, dude. People can do it on a Harley if they have to, but it's not. It's not the same, dude. It's not at all the same. Like the, <clears throat> it's just like a, like riding to the trail. So it's like you ride to the trail. You ride two hours away or an hour away to the trail on a bike, and then you go. Okay, you have to get that bike home. And so if you're like, I'm going to go into the woods now. So as far as out as you go in the woods, you got to come back. So what happens when you're on your big ADV bike and you break a clutch lever because you drop them? What happens when you drop it and you – and all this stuff's happening. If you're into ADV, if you're into adventure mm-hmm. riding, <clears throat> these are this is stuff you're accounting for. You know, you, you, this is part of the fun is, is to, you know conquering that stuff. But to me, I, that's just not I can fun. See that. That's not like – that's not what I want to do. I want to go out and have something that I can just wreck. I can just wreck this fucking bike and thrash it. And if I break it, big fucking deal. It's meant to break and be replaced and everything like that. I'm just gonna drop it and not worry about it. I don't, <laughs> how many times I've dropped my, rolled my dirt bike and down a hill and crashed it into trees and just beat the ever loving snot yeah. out of that thing. And it's just like, whatever, it's what you're supposed to do. Imagine doing that to a mo- to a nice motorcycle. Yeah, well, a motorcycle well, is maybe up the street his, and you're his, not for it. A dual sport. Though. Oh, David. But his has electric start. <laughs> and it does have an electric start. <laughs> yes. All right. So when we return from our break, uh, let's go into some of the different types of racing that uh, we can look forward to and talk a little bit more about dirt bikes. So, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I totally <laughs> fucked that one up. Nailed it. Nutsack is the only EDC bag the crew carries, and for good reason. They're crazy and awesome. They get their name because folks said they had to be nuts to manufacture a man bag in America with American waxed canvas, American leather, and American labor. We want you to join us in the two-week challenge. Buy a bag from them, use it for two weeks, and if it doesn't completely change the way you carry your everyday gear, they will give you a full refund. We absolutely love ours from carrying a Around extra mags for our concealed carry to earbuds, sunglasses, vape stuff, and business cards. It is great having less shit in our pockets, and it was because of the nutsack satchels that we were able to be less weighed down. If you buy using our link, Nutsack will give you $5 off to enjoy a beer. Head over to nutsack.com slash B2W. That's N-U-T-S-A-C dot com slash be the number two w to get yours today and we are back uh shade tree did you have a chance to go pee is your go gopro back on yes <laughs> you got the camera back on uh, got a bladder like a nine-year-old girl so yes no sure camera Okay. All right. Cool. Cool. Oh yeah. No, I got my GoPro. We are professional here. Yes, one hundred percent. All right. So we were talking about going out to the trails and everything. Um, during the break, you were talking about scheduling and being okay to ride by yourself. Let's let's actually bring that into the episode. Let's let's talk about that now. With us, there's again potentially going to be five of us. So having the ability to have someone to go ride with much higher likelihood unless it's you know and compared to when it's just you and one other friend yeah um but you were saying be comfortable going out to the trails by yourself can you elaborate if you're if you're gonna if you're going gonna ride regularly you have to be okay going by yourself because if you excuse me um you you had mentioned the gym thing i'm like if i had somebody to go with and it's just counting on somebody else being like, I'm not going to go unless other people go 
Mm. is just a breeding ground for excuses to not go ride your bike. And because it is, it's hard work. It's working out, you know, and it's getting up early and there's usually a drive involved and it costs money. Um, and so if you just go like, well, they're not going, so I'm not going to go. It's just a really easy trap to fall into. So you always have to be willing to go by right. yourself. And, and so I everybody think, else did. I think after like, well, I'm just gonna go by myself. I'm I've gone a few times with you guys, I would be more comfortable yeah. going alone. And if I'm going to go alone, I'm definitely, you know, safety conscious. That's, that's my big thing is. So I wouldn't go, I mean, like I would go hit like the easier trails by myself, yeah. you know, put around, just yeah. keep the feel, you know, keep, you know, what skills you're building, keep them sharp. You also do, you do a lot of different things. I, <clears throat> when you go ride with a group of people, there's like, it's much less, you will do way less riding. The more people yeah, that are there, the less yeah. riding you will do. Um, uh, because you'll just each other. spend time talking, people will be getting ready, uh, or stop for different reasons. So the more people are there, the less riding you will do. That's fine because you're having fun. You're with a group of people. But if you go by your when you go by yourself, that is when you will make the that most significant yeah. gains yeah. to your skills. Well, and it and it'll build your confidence because you don't really you don't you won't have anybody else per se to rely on, right. except for if somebody else just happens to be out there and passes you or something like that. Well, at the end of the day, too, it's it's a community. So if you're out there by yourself, chances well, especially for you, can you'll meet people. And you might be able to tag along with them just so you have that safety in numbers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Justin, how much was it there to go ride for the weekend or for Saturday? $25 day pass. You can also do a weekend pass for 45 They also offer six-month and year-long memberships. Really? Oh, wow. And something for you guys. Uh, the membership includes access to their shooting range as well. Fuck yes. And they also, I don't know if this was part of included, but they also have a pretty badass like um, sporting clay set up too with the automatic machines and all yeah, that too. They do three guns out there, three gun competition. Oh, out there. yeah. But um, but yeah, the, the shooting range is literally right there next to where we were setting up. So. Yeah, cool. yeah they, do, they do the three guns out there and they bring in top names like Jerry Mitchell yeah. and people like that. And they also have, if you get the membership, you get, I think, free camping or like severely discounted camping, which I think the camping is only $20 a night anyways. But they also have little bunk houses out there too that oh, wow. you can go and rent. Because so. they've, they've got all sorts of types of riding out there, right? Uh, like from easy to expert. There's definitely some expert stuff. Um, we were on some of the easier trails, and they were either not as easy as they should have been or just extremely boring. Um, it's really, I'll say this, Hidden Falls is very tailored toward the Jeep community. Yeah. It's very Jeep-friendly. And don't get me wrong, if, if I owned a Jeep and was into that kind of stuff, that place was like Jeep porn. I mean, everything was, like, focused around Jeeps. They even had a, a Jeep staging area that had all the – because they have to lower their tire pressure and everything like oh, that. Yeah. They had, like, 17 air gauges oh, set shit. up with all the air stations. And they had these little racks that almost looked like – almost looked like bike racks, but they only had, like, two pegs sticking up, like, every, you know, eight inches or so. And I was like, what the fuck are those for? Like, that's not a bike rack. You can't fit a dirt bike in that. Well, then later we came by. That's where they get their doors. I was going to say the doors. Yeah, they take their doors off and set them in there. And like I was like, that is cool. Like <laughs> they're really tailored towards the jeeps. So then, they're really set up out there. Oh, very set up. Yeah, they've got showers, bathrooms. I mean, you name it. They have food. They do have food. Yeah, they have a little general store that has like you know your waters and Gatorades and stuff, and they also have like little food trucks and stuffs out there for um, like hot foods. And they have big pavilions so you can get out of the sun. Yeah, it's it's pretty nice. Okay. But I will say that. I've been better places for dirt dirt bike specific riding. Like Zars Ranch, the one we were talking about, I would much rather go out there and ride than Hidden Falls. Hidden Falls is more towards the the aggressive uh, trail riding type stuff when Zars Ranch is more just have fun trails. Okay. All right. So we might want to try At least that one for, first. I, I will put a caveat on this. We only went on about maybe 10% of the trails yesterday in three hours. Wow. Not, Not because, because it's that big, big, just because we were going that slow. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. 
because we got lost. We did the same trails like six fucking times. But okay, so let's let's talk about some of the different racing and Shatri, You can shed a lot of light on this. A hair scramble, or there's other names for these, but can you kind of go into what it is and what the I guess the premise behind it is. Well, I mean, everybody's familiar with motocross racing that's on a track. Um, and uh, hair scramble racing is usually on a track as well. It's just a much longer track. Um, so, and everybody's different, but here in Florida, when we do hair scrambles, mm. it's usually on like a 10 to 15 mile track. And so you'll just go like, if you're really fast, you can do five laps. If you're a normal person, you do three to four laps. Um, <clears throat> and then, uh, and it's, and it's like slow. It's not like a fast, like a motocross track. It's like, you know, you're talking about, uh, hair scrambles or the ones we do. It's different everywhere. And ones we do are timed. So basically it's two hours. Oh, okay. So hmm. it's as many laps as you can do in two hours. And, uh, so enduros are different. I think they're, I think they're, they're four hours here. This is places are different here. Their enduros mm -hmm. are four hours, but there's like a break in between them and gas stops and stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. But I mean, the catch-all term is enduro racing, but that's just a catch-all okay. in as much as it means endurance racing. So everybody does it different. You know, there's a there's not really, I mean, there's rules, but you know, we do like the European style starts. A lot of people. Oh, do okay. That. Like we run, we run to our bikes. You know, they call it a Le Mans, Le Mans start, um, and we mm -hmm. almost nobody else. That'd be there. different. That's like for whatever reason. Change it up. That in Florida. <laughs> it's like no, I, I've seen races everywhere else. Like almost no one else does that. I mean, I'm sure there's other races that do that, but very few. <laughs> okay. Um, it's just kind of weird. But then you start racing in Texas, they'll have their own weird little rules because this isn't this isn't like there isn't like a big governing body telling people how to do stuff. This is just a group of people who are passionate about dirt bikes and racing who like put this together. So they're all volunteers. Like everyone for yeah. the Florida Trail Riders Association yeah, volunteers right. their time. House rules. Okay. Nobody's getting paid. Yeah. So it's it's just, I mean the more more the how. It's like why? Why would you want to race? You know, it's like that's 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 what's always curious to me. It's like if you guys are interested in racing. It's like why? I mean, why do just you want to? Sounds race? like it'd be fun. Yeah, it is. It's it's incredible fun, and it's a it's a really cool place to um, where you you don't you get yeah. to ride places you wouldn't normally get to ride. That's one of the reasons I love it. Is I've ridden well, in I mean, every corner of the state of. Florida. I mean, it's not that far in Florida to drive anywhere. That places that you would never get to ride, but since there's a race, since there's a race there, like you get to ride all these different terrains and all these different tracks, and it's really cool and really fun. And there's so many people out there. The reason I liked it is because it's it's like trail reason. riding with an objective. Yeah. Like because when you go out there just by yourself with friends, it's just like, oh, where do we want to go? Oh, yeah, we'll you go, know, go to take a tired. left, take a right. Oh, check this out. Let's stop and have a. When you go to a hair square, it's like, all right, you had to make it to this point, back to this point, in as quickly as possible. Yeah. Yeah, it makes you. It makes you very. It's very different from trail. It's very different because you're just going like, how do I shed time? How do I, you know, I'm not going to go for the hard line. I'm yeah. going to go, what's the easiest, fastest, most efficient way to do this? And it's, it's a fun exercise. It's fun. Mentally, it's very challenging. Um, you will like be very surprised at how much more energy you use. Like it's, it's, and just, it's, it's fun. There's like, you're out there and there's, you're going like, Oh my God, dude, I'm running into this trail and there's like 30 yeah. other motorcycles <laughs> hauling ass around me. You know what I mean? It's like it's it's, it's technically super exciting. See, that's why I'm the last one to start. It's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> like you need to run to your bike and be like, "Can I just walk briskly to it?" It's a small job. Yeah. Some people do. That's the whole thing. Is like there's there yeah. no fucking there ain't yeah, no that, money at the end of the trail. <laughs> so some people, some people, and when I do there, some people yeah. just walk to the bikes. So like everybody else go and beer they just run their own race. Do a lap and then pound a beer and 
Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's funny that you mentioned that because I was doing some research on the, that race that I told you about coming up at the end of next month. And uh, it's almost like a mixture of uh, like a, like your Florida style hair scramble and what you described as enduro. So it's like a, I think it's an hour, half, two hour um, race. But after each lap, there's a 15 minutes pit time. So it's the restart format. So once you finish a lap, your time stops. You got 15 minutes to fuel up, get drinks, whatever. Fix anything you may need to fix. Yeah, fix anything and then go back up to the line and start again for your next lap. Oh. And that's when your time. Highly unlikely. <laughs> Are you going to do it, Justin? Let me, tell, let me say this. Um, you two, I, I, I just don't take everything I say. I'm not trying to sound like I'm speaking from some, like, grand chair where I fucking know everything. But the coolest thing about YouTube, the coolest thing about making YouTube videos Damn it. is going the extra mile. And what's yeah. the extra mile? It's going send like there's it, a race in a month and a half. I just got a fucking bike. Send it. Do it. Fucking Don't do be it. Pussy. Because you're you're the person yeah. that everybody's Don't looking be at to pussy. be like, well, I got You don't even have a bike yet. You shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ken and I would be your cheering okay. session. Yeah. And your yeah. pit crew. Yeah. yeah. That, guy, that, guy, that guy made it happen. You put aside your excuses and you said, you know what? No, I'm going to do this come hell or high water and I might fail. But I'm gonna go do it. I mean, you do what you want. Do what you want. I mean, I'm not. I realize everybody's got a life. You got stuff you gotta do. But it's all about. No, oh, absolutely. Of, and it's that's. So easy and to then not I remember do, not doing it is easy. And, but you're not there. You've got a YouTube channel. You're showing people how to do stuff that is that is yeah. doing the extra and mile, it, doing the hard stuff. You know, and that's hard. Like taking that first step. That's what people don't do. Like, I'd like do to it. race. <laughs> Yeah. Well, the, go go race. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Doing it. No, now, I remember you saying in, in your <laughs> first uh, hair yeah, yeah, video, you said if I just kept talking about it, that's all I'd ever do. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so I'll tell you my reservations about this one, and it's a hundred percent based on location. So it's it's happening all within the Hidden Falls Adventure Park. Okay. And I've seen the type of terrain out there, and it's not the the time that I'm worried about. It's not the endurance I'm worried about. It's the actual terrain and location I'm worried about. It's the, I don't know if I could even finish one lap. When is it? Have you not this particular race. I want to say this is the first time that they're having it out there. So I'm not able to, to see a lot of it. Oh, then nobody knows what the fuck they're doing. Then. They're not, but I mean... I, I was talking to some guys there in the pits, and they said, oh, we'll stay off of this trail, stay off of this trail. He said, I've been riding for you know, X number of years, and I can't even get up this one. And he said, it's like fucking mountain goat shit. So call, so call ahead. Justin, call. There's, there's usually somebody, a number that you can call that's going to be familiar with the race. Um, there'll be people pre-running it, so you can go, you can probably go help, mm -hmm. like even volunteer, like with cutting the trail and everything like that. You can get an idea of what the trail's going to look like if you pre-run it. Um, and you can call them and be like, okay, how is this going to be set up? Is there going to be easy, hard? Because that's what in FTR, that's what they do is like, if there's a really bad obstacle gotcha. or a really bad hill climb, they'll have easy, hard. And so you can like, you can go through the hill climb, but here's the easy way around. If you don't feel comfortable, because at the end of the day, yeah, they, don't they don't, they don't want you tearing up they your shit and getting hurt because then you won't come back. Hurt. So it just—it just sounds like exactly. They, it just sounds like Justin's scared, time, so <laughs> which is okay. It's okay to be scared. Uh, September twenty-eighth and twenty-ninth. When is it? What's the date, Justin? Why does that? Why does that date sound familiar? I've got so much. To, I, I would be like, you know, it'd be so cool if oh, I was bro. just like. I'll <laughs> oh, see. Like, okay, I can't help I'll you on the twenty-eighth of September. You. I'm I'm going uh I'm going dove hunting. Oh, I'll see. You. I can. <laughs> um, I'll be. I I think I'm going to be. Oh, you're making out to aim this year in uh, Cleveland for aim. Dope. No. No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no. Trust me, I would much rather and go to aim than <laughs> go run that race. <laughs> no, I'm thinking I'm going to yes, wait until I find one up in. Because the only reason I'm picking this one is because it's close. It's mm -hmm. well, it's not as close as I thought it was. It's, it's like an hour, hour and a half. Hour and a half. Actually. Yeah. Uh, so it's a little bit further than I thought it was, but. 
Um, I'd rather wait for something like up near in the Dallas area. They have a lot of red sand and things like that. Just a lot of oh, flat, more yeah. flat stuff. So. Hey, uh, communicate with me when you find one. It'd be so because I've been oh, I've be been wanting awesome. to make it out in Texas forever. Anyway, that'd be like a cool first episode. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying I'll be able to make it happen because I've got to drive I mean, halfway across the country with my dirt. Yeah. yeah. I would, that would, that, be, would, that be would be cool. Be like, I, I mean, hey, you could always just come to San Antonio and we can just ride regular motorcycles. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. No, yeah, I that'd be awesome. And ride the, ride Hidden Falls. So yeah, yeah, bring the sure. bring the dirt bike down and we can hook you up with a a, a real bike. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Talk about racing, um, but that's uh, if you don't think there are races in your area, you're wrong. Yeah. There are. No, no, you're right. You just race you just have to remember that it, in, in Texas it's, <laughs> it's hot uh, as fuck. Well, not only that, no, not, I'm not talking about that, but I'm talking about like like up near Dallas. There's a shit ton of races. One of their biggest series had 650 something riders this last season. Jeez, damn. But I mean, the closest race is fucking I think Waco. It's three and a half three hours, yeah. and then there's some up in like Norman, Oklahoma. That's eight hours. I mean, that's yeah. Yeah, that's that's eight hours is crazy. But I'll yeah, tell you when I go to races, that seems reasonable. Races, that's Houston for us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like that's yeah. the neighboring yeah. metropolitan. Yeah, I, I don't know. Dallas is just so flat and boring, and the roads are terrible. So you yeah. definitely need the dirt bikes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so wrapping up this episode, let's let's go into some final thoughts okay. around your re-entry into dirt biking and shade trees history of dirt dirt biking uh, what are some something that we can leave our audience food for thought i think my biggest food for thought is if you've never done it ask yourself what kind of regrets am i going to have if i never even try it mm-hmm or what's the worst that can happen if I do try it? You sell a bike, or you buy a bike, and then you sell it? I mean, I could die. Eh, I mean, that's highly Okay, unlikely. same as going 75 on the highway. Or walking to the grocery store. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, death is all around you. Yeah. I, I, I have received, well, I received let's hear about it. We haven't seen Justin turn bikes. green in a while. <laughs> yeah. Oh no! I mean, you guys. I, oh, that's right. I, I remember yeah. that. I broke, I broke my foot. I was in a wheelchair. Yeah, for I'm. Three ju- I'm, I'm not, not worried about crashing. crashing. I'm worried about what happens when I crash. If like a broken arm, broken shoulder, mm-hmm. that I I don't want to break bones. Yeah. I don't want to do anything that's going to put me in the hospital. See, that's that's where I land, and I was kind of talking to Brad about that because he was like, "Oh, I don't want to, you know, injure myself." And I, I brought up how you said you didn't want to to snowboard or ski because you have a job that you know relies on your hands and. I mean, really, everyone, anyone who has a job works with their hands in some form or fashion, whether it be typing on a computer or, you know, serving drinks at a bar. You're using your hands. Well, my reason for not snowboarding and skiing that weekend was because I was flying out the following, what, Friday or Tuesday. Yeah. And? Are you not allowed to get on a plane with a cast on? You can, but it's hard enough for me to get on a plane as it is. Okay, so you're just making excuses. Then. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sounds like I mean, as long as you're aware, <laughs> as long as you're aware of it. But that's why I tell people is like injuries are going to come. But, I mean, uh, we were talking about, you know, uh, Hasso's, you know, dilemma and Gina saying that it was not safe. And I'm like, okay, you're going out and riding 75 miles on, on a four-lane interstate. I, I would venture that. <laughs> That dirt bike riding is much safer than riding on the road. And see, that's the, the thing road. is you're, you're, the possibility of, you know, scrapes, bruises, maybe oh, even yeah. some broken bones, much higher on a dirt bike. But if you're talking about life ending or hospitable injuries. Yeah. I mean, unless God. you're doing some motocross shit. Yeah. 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 Which I'm not going to be doing. No. It goes, yeah, it goes just pushing themselves a lot harder, doing things, maybe taking them uh, out of their comfort zone. Yeah, see it all. It's like there's like every guy. There was one race. There was two freaking medevacs at the race, like in the helicopter. Shit. Um, I saw there was one. A guy got paralyzed. Um, I mean, you're not helping. Like I actually, yeah, but you're talking. Chances (laughs) are those were probably A class guys. 
But it's, it's still like these are, a lot of those come from yeah. people who are just like they're going like I have to win instead of just being like I'm just having fun racing and that's fun that's fun to them but like I just when I go out yeah. there I'm like man exactly. I'm not I remember that that, that exactly. first race you were in that that leader of the A class <laughs> blew by you and holy shit that guy was scooting <laughs> I mean, so really, you can imagine if you go down at that speed, the injuries are going to be quite a bit different. I mean, I'd say I'd say one of my biggest fears. Oh yeah, no, you can, or none at all. Like, I, yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. I'd say one of my biggest fears, you know, riding out here in Texas, injured. would be a snakes <laughs> and yeah. b spiders in my helmet. No. Yeah, yeah. It, it can happen. Have you seen his video where he had that giant fucking spider on his helmet? Yes, yes, Jesus I've seen Christ. it. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna Spider say I'd be scared. I'd be more scared to, to ride in Florida because I mean, uh, fucking gators yeah. everywhere. <laughs> I'm terrified of gators. I've seen I've seen gators on the trail before too. Whatever. Spiders the gators just they just run away from you. Know? <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. Spider thing. Spider thing sucks. But I would just say like the the race thing, and just because I don't want to just end it just on that, but it's. Not everybody wants to race. I get that, but it's just such an awesome way to push yourself. Yeah. Yes. And it's you. Some of you guys were in the military, right? So I was never in the military, but it's like when I hear people talk about it sometimes, especially people who served in like active duty. I'm not comparing the two, but they like they admit, they go like, oh man, just like pushing myself and being in in danger and even if they hated it at the yeah. time there's like just something that they they loved about it right yeah like just being out there and doing dangerous stuff and uh to me it's like it 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 it, it seems almost like that where it's like i i live a pretty a lifestyle that's easy and there's not a lot of danger involved in it and i go to work and i go home and i pay my bills and i watch youtube but then you can go out and you can do these races hmm. and you can be like, this is, this is fucking wild. This is fucking, this is crazy. I'm going out <laughs> here and you'll just yeah. in your head, you go like, what the fuck am I doing? What am I mean? I can't believe I'm doing this. And it's, so, and it's, and it's, it's so exhilarating. And I would even say now I'd be like, Oh, that would go away or fade. You know, it it never goes away. There, there's a lot of things I miss doing. about being in what? the military, but <laughs> Bullets flying at me and the crack of an AK is not one of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and for sure, I mean, I, I said I was never in the military. I mean, I don't know. I just you know, I hear like, I people tell stories like, oh man, I was like, blah blah blah, this and the being whatever, just doing cool, dangerous stuff, and like, oh, I'm just like that. It really, you are you step so the, far the norm, outside. Yeah. <clears throat> what is like your normal life because you're going like I'm just going to go like pit myself on a motorcycle against 200 other people at high rates of speed and you're, and <laughs> you're like this is not this is normal this is not normal this is an everyday life this is dangerous so why am I doing this and it's a really uh, you know Tracy and really I cool feeling. when um, we start dating and everything so I, I have a pretty fast and loose philosophy on life it's called the fuck it philosophy uh tracy is a she's a wedding planner so everything's coordinated and planned out it's very or, analytical yeah and she's like well it's a process so that became kind of our running joke was fuck it it's a process and yeah. I'm like, for me, I want to do this because I haven't done it before. Oh yeah. I've never, and done it. And I've always, I've always liked dirt bikes, but I've never ridden them yeah. beyond riding around someone's you know property in their yard. Yeah. And for me, I know I'm going to suck, but I knew I was going to suck when I first got on a motorcycle and just yeah. over time and miles and in this case hours and you still suck and yeah. you know, I'll get better. You know, I can't control what the dumb shit behind me is going to do. You know? <laughs> yeah. There it is, bitch. <laughs> it took a while to get there. Yep. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I, I see it as a new challenge and fuck it. It's, you know, 1500 to $2,000 plus the gear. Yeah. And if that brings me 
20, 60, 100 hours worth of joy, then it's worth it. It's kind of like us going out and buying $25,000 motorcycles. If it brings joy, who the fuck cares? Because yeah. it's just money. Yeah. And that's yep. that's how I'm looking at dirt biking. It's it's a new challenge. It's something I've never done. And I love trail riding on mountain bikes and on BMX bikes. So why not take the other passion I have of riding motorcycles and just combine them? Thank you for tuning in to Between Two Wheels podcast. To see the show notes for this and all of our episodes, to find links to our social media and Patreon page where we are raising money for Project Clean Slate, head over to our website at www.betweentwowheels.com. The two is spelled out T-W-O. On behalf of Justin, Uncle Ken, I am Johnny Roblox saying, be yourself unless you're a jerk. Then be someone better. Peace. I, I, I be dead, dude. I like, I like dead.